Hello there and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. The Nasdaq is down 2% today. A lot of major stocks, including stocks in my portfolio, Apple, Virgin Galactic, a lot of the SPACs that I own, a lot of major companies that I own are down significantly, some as much as 10%. I'm not worried because I'm in this for the long term. In fact, I did some more buying today. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about why the financial system is rigged why it's an insider game and how you can plan for a future in which the game will continue to be rigged. Look guys, I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that one day the system will become fair because the system is not going to become fair. I am someone who looked at the stock market 10 years ago and said, gosh, I, I hope to own some stocks someday. And today I manage a multi-million dollar portfolio. I'll tell you exactly what my lessons were and I'll tell you how you can work with the financial system that is indeed rigged. Let me start with proof that the financial system is rigged. On your screen, you'll see a tweet from Jeff Stein over at the Washington Post. And Jeff reports that the former U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin is planning an investing fund. And yes, he's planning on essentially having a fund where he can presumably invite high net worth individuals to contribute. And then he can manage millions, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't think he's going to be doing a $5, $10 stock or anything like that. And he's expecting to seek backing from the Middle East, from Gulf state sovereign wealth funds, among other investors. And Mnuchin has already started hiring. Here's a headline of an article on your screen published by the Washington Post. Steve Mnuchin has already begun hiring for an investment fund likely to focus on the financial technology and entertainment sectors. Now, keep in mind, Mnuchin does have a background in entertainment. He used to finance films before he became the U.S. Treasury Secretary. Now, think about this. He was the U.S. Treasury Secretary. He was worth hundreds of millions of dollars even before he took that job. He then made connections internationally while being the U.S. Treasury Secretary and some of these connections are in the Middle East. And then he's using some of those connections to further his own financial interests as a private citizen after leaving the administration. Now think about this for a second. If this is not a symptom of a rigged game, what is? In fact, when the capital incident happened on the 6th of January, Mnuchin was actually on a diplomatic mission through the Middle East. He was traveling through the Middle East and Africa, visiting Sudan, Egypt, Israel, and the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. Think about this. He was in those countries while we were going through an insurrection, and now he is presumably using some contacts made while he was a member of the U.S. administration in order to further his own financial interests. Here's an announcement on your screen from the U.S. Department of Treasury's official website where the secretary was going to lead and did lead a U.S. delegation to Israel, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates in support of the Abraham Record. So he was there while all of this was happening. Also, as all of this is happening, Mnuchin is doing what other senior government officials have done. He's now on the speaking circuit and he'll charge $250,000 to speak at your conference. So in case you're having a conference, and you want to pay Steven Mnuchin $250,000 to speak at your conference, he'll be happy to take your money. So you may want to take note of that. Now, folks, I want to be as clear as I can. The new U.S. Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, has also made money in speaking fees, speaking with major banks and corporations. Janet Yellen, the current U.S. Treasury Secretary, has earned over $7 million in speaking fees, speaking with banks and speaking with corporations over the past few years. And this information is from her official financial disclosure form. You'll see her financial disclosure on your screen as we scroll down this, uh, this document. Janet Yellen made over $7 million in speaking fees, speaking with major banks and corporations over the past two years. And she was required to disclose this. And she did before accepting the job of the U.S. Treasury Secretary. And what I find most ironic when we're speaking about Steven Mnuchin soliciting hundreds of millions of dollars, Janet Yellen making $7 million dollars and Steven Mnuchin charging $250,000 to speak, we are talking about a $10 an hour minimum wage. Here's the headline of an article on your screen, and I did cover this in another video. The Republicans are offering $10 an hour minimum wage. Now think about this, $10 an hour minimum wage and hundreds of millions of dollars on the other side. If this doesn't tell you the system is rigged, I don't know what will. And while all this is happening, you see this headline of an article from Bloomberg Tech Paces, 
US stock slump as rotation takes hold. People, meaning large hedge funds, the insiders, are selling the stocks that have gone up like Apple, like Tesla, and are then rotating that money into bank stocks. One of my biggest holdings is Bank of America. As the world is falling apart in the stock market, Bank of America is going up because people are rotating money into stocks like that. At some point, there'll be a rotation out of those out of those safe stocks, if you will, into the technology sector. But this just tells you that the game is rigged and the retail investor, the normal investor is just left holding the bag by, by buying overpriced stocks and then watching them fall, not knowing what hit them. And speaking of not knowing what hit them, if you're in cryptocurrency, you'll see this headline on your screen from Bloomberg, Bitcoin tumbles below 50,000 as fear swifts through crypto. Now, folks, uh, Bitcoin is a digital asset. It's not something you can touch. It's not something you can see. It's not something you can feel. It doesn't matter to me whether you're a supporter of Bitcoin or not. I invested $6,000 in Bitcoin two or three years ago, and I bet I believe it's 20, 30,000 now. It doesn't really matter to me. For me, Bitcoin is something I watch on the sidelines. I invest in a lot of technology companies and emerging companies in the stock market and I invest in a lot of real estate. But I'm just trying to show you this article to give you a sense of how volatile, how unpredictable and in many ways how rigged the market is because a single tweet from someone like Elon Musk could send the price of Bitcoin going up or down, which again is an indication of momentum and emotion driving the stock market as opposed to an element of fairness, an element of long-term fundamental behavior at the moment. Now, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen both expressed skepticism about Bitcoin and said that they were too sure about the long-term future of Bitcoin and also Bitcoin's technical indicators look stretched according to many, many experts, meaning it's way too high and it's time for a correction. And as the stock market is starting to crack a little bit, home prices seem to keep going up. Here's a headline of an article on your screen from Bloomberg. By the way, we'll provide you with a link to all these articles in the description section below. Home prices in the US see a jump at the fastest pace since 2014. So keep in mind that home prices continue to go up because of low mortgage rates. What is the bottom line? Number one, the game is rigged. Number two, you need to understand that there are forces at play that essentially are larger than you and me. And you need to make sure that whatever you invest in, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's something like Apple, whether it's stocks like Etsy, whether it's whether it's clean energy companies, whether it's marijuana companies, you need to make sure that you know how to do the research on those companies. You understand how they make money. You ask yourself, are they likely to make money in the future? And you have a strategy on how much you expect to make each year from your stocks and you have a goal in mind. And when there are bumps in the road and there will be bumps, things are rocky right now, things will continue to get rocky. Things could get better tomorrow and things could become extremely rocky a month from now. There are short-term fluctuations in the stock market. My advice to you would be not to try and catch a short-term wave, but instead be in it for the long term. Pick stocks, buy them at the right prices. If you don't know how to buy stocks at the right prices, study valuations, learn how to value a stock so that when you buy something, you're buying it at the right price and then hold for the long term because that is when most of your money will be made. Most of your money will be made when you hold stocks for the long term and they appreciate, not when you try and catch a swing or when you try to do some fancy options trading or, or when you try and ride up something like Reddit or a short squeeze. That is not the way for long-term wealth. In fact, that is indicative of the fact that we have a rigged system and that makes more victims than it makes victors. I want you to be a victor. I don't want you to be a victim and I don't want you to try and get caught up in the short-term frenzy because the short-term frenzy is driven by those who, who essentially run the rigged system. This is the truth, folks. I'm just being completely honest with you. The camera doesn't lie. I hope you learned something new. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. That would mean a lot to me personally. I would really appreciate that. That helps out the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.